Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, we're discussing the global esports market connecting India, Latin America, and the United States. My guest is Ulysses Carcamo Bonnard, the founder of Now Play No Games and head of marketing for Shaky Corp. Welcome, Ulysses. Hello, Katerine. Well, uh, thank you very much for having me. All right. So I understand you're in Chile right now. Right now, yeah. All right. So can you tell us about what is your company Now Play No Games? Uh, for telling you a, a little bit about my company, I need to tell you about the path that I was doing from 2017 and esports field. I started working in here in Chile in the Festi game. That is the biggest uh, esports um, a conference that we have here in Latin America. Only after uh, the, the Rio from Brazil game show. And in this moment, I can connect with the industry and start working abroad in Spain and United States, and now in India doing the tournaments from battleground for uh, all the Indian esports market that is growing in this moment really, really fast. Oh, that's terrific. So um, do you, uh, does your company um, handle, uh, work in other countries in Latin America or is it just Chile? In, in this moment, it's Chile and Brazil. We have some uh, few projects that we are developing in Brazil with some uh, game shows uh, areas and some teams that I, I can reveal the names right now because I, I didn't sign some NDAs uh, and some, some contracts because we are trying to develop uh, partnership with different leagues from Brawl Stars, uh, Battleground in these moments, because we are uh, starting to set up a, a really big marketing project uh, abroad. And we are trying to put all this together abroad to uh, uh, finish the production, audiovisual production over uh, California LA. We want to do the final of the of the all the tournament with the competitors in an uh, event in Los Angeles, California, where I was living before the pandemic, and to launch a, a, a worldwide um, content from Los Angeles, California for the all these markets, India, Brazil, Chile, and we are trying to focus in the Spanish speaking market. Terrific, and I understand you were just recently in Greece. Yeah. And so were you at a conference there? The conference was in Athens. Uh, was a little tricky because with all the trip restrictions, uh, I was, uh, wasn't in my, in my time in the forum because I, I have a problem with the trip over uh, Holland. But after that, I can stay and participate in the conference that was focused in the casino companies that want to enter to the esports market. And you know, this uh, is kind of tricky for uh, both industries because have a really weird relationship uh, between them. And they are trying to start putting sponsorships and trying to put uh, investment in the, in the esports area that we need to develop uh, in Mexico, uh, Latin America, and now in India. So what is Shaky Corp? Shaky Corps is a, is a team based on in India from like uh, esports professional over there that know really well the rosters from India and the talent. And they are putting together these uh, tournaments for underdogs that uh, allow like 60,000 people to compete for uh, know who is better in this uh, first occasion, Battleground Mobile India. And they are doing a, a really terrific work because in the two, three, sorry, three years of life that have this company, they uh, have like really big numbers for the Indian esports market that is kind of tricky too, because have like um, some particularities that uh, is hard to explain about the VLAN connection and other factors. Even that they have a, a really big, um, size of audience uh, for, for the from the people from India, 
And for that reason, Take It Girls is doing a, a really big work because they uh, already have like um, concurrent numbers, viewers, uh, like 60,000 in uh, really small uh, communities and tournaments. And, and with this big uh, project for the underdogs, like this big tournament with money prize and everything that my company is uh, sponsor them uh, with with the the, the prizes, um, they are trying to uh, start being competitive uh, against the all the it seem like uh, gaming comp competitivity, you know. Sir, sure. so uh, how big is Esports in India versus in Latin America versus the United States. It's a, it's a really good, good question because uh, here, for example, in Chile, we are uh, 19 uh, million people, uh, and esports viewer are like one million and two hundred thousand people right now. With the pandemic, are going into the esports and start looking that. We also in the biggest competition here in Latin America, that is the League of Legends competition, uh, named it the LLA. Uh, we have two teams competing on that. And for that reason, we, the, the numbers are getting bigger like in any part of the world because of the pandemic. Sure, sure. Uh, and uh, and uh, following with the question, sorry. Uh, after that, you have Mexico that me Mexico have like, uh, 20 million market over esports or people uh, uh, video game interested looking for content on on the web and in India I, I don't I don't have the final numbers because I already have some numbers but we are trying to set all the measures with the different tournaments and in this first occasion we're going to have our own measure about battleground mobile India. So what games are popular in um, in Latin America, Chile, Brazil, Mexico? Uh, it's like any any other regions of the world. Uh, first uh, place is League of Legends, of course. Uh, after that is Fortnite. And right now, Call of Duty Mobile and other mobile games are going up in the numbers. but. It's, it's like the same order that you have in, there in the United States or the Europe uh, video uh, video game community. Have, uh, the, the numbers are the same in, in all the regions. You know, I understand that mobile esports are really big in India and I, and that it isn't as big in the U.S. What about Latin America? Yeah, Latin America is a really special place to talk about that because uh, for example, in Argentina and Peru and Chile, we have more cell phones than people here have like, I don't know if here in Chile, the last time the government say there are over like 27 millions of cell phones working, uh, active. And it's really weird because all, all the people here have a cell phone like any, any, any other part of the world, but uh, the people are starting to play games with the massive phenomenon of uh, Candy Crush that helps a lot. The, it's not an eSport, but uh, helps a, a lot about the inclusion of the culture, about the video games, that we have really big problems with authorities trying to uh, recognize that. I start doing like political lobby in Brazil, Chile, and Argentina to explain about the phenomenon of the eSports and the industry and everything, everything that will come. And in some countries, they don't believe in that. They believe that is uh, like a public health issue or problem. And for that reason, it's, it's really complicated for the um, local environment to grow about investment and about regulation. What, what, what Latin American companies, I mean, countries are most ahead in esports? Right now, for example, we don't have like competitive teams uh, from Latin America over like the, the big competition of the finals. Uh, in 2019, I was in the final of League of Legends in Paris, and we only put only one team from Latin America to, to the finals and they lose in the first round. But uh, right now, it's, it's kind of weird because we don't, we, we have like 
uh, for example, some esports ad athletes in uh, Mario Smash Bros. That we have a like a world champion from from Chile, another one from Brazil, but uh, we are not doing so well in the competitive side of the industry uh, in comparison with the Asian and the United States that you are leading the the, the competitions right now. Sure. And so, do you think that people in the United States should be looking seriously at Latin America as a potential market? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that is a fact because the esports industry uh, today will provide like a vehicle of marketing for your product or for anything. And here in Latin America, the people love to buy like uh, American products and the esports products, the, the community here uh, recognize that the better products are from America or from uh, South Korea or from uh, Japan but uh, it's a really good opportunity for uh, United States uh, companies to come here to try to take this uh, marketing billboard that are really cheap because the industry is cheaper here in the region and, and have a, like a really good profit uh, of taking this opportunity here in Latin America nowadays that is really, really cheap to do it with really big numbers of uh, audience. Have you noticed any particular trends that you find interesting in esports in relation to any of these three three regions that you're uh, dealing with? Uh, it's crazy that you ask me that because uh, right now I think the most interesting trend in the esports market is the uh, NFT trend, uh, mm -hmm. non fungible tokens that. Is the, the same model that the video game industry always uh, had that sell like skins and everything. But right now with the blockchain and Ethereum technology, you can have like, uh, I don't know, uh, a shoe from Mario that is, can be yours and identical with your own number and be yours forever, or you can sell it. And it's incredible all the, possibilities that we have in NFT and video games of how to make revenue or new ways of monetization that the industry needs uh, in this moment really bad. Now, do you, uh, do you personally work with uh, NFTs or does your company? Yeah, uh, right now I'm working with the um, uh, Barcelona company, Play the Game. And we are trying to develop uh, some NFTs that they are uh, starting working by them with Binance. And, and they are doing some projects for, for example, for Rosalia and other projects for La Copa del Rey. That is the national competition from the soccer. And they make the first NFT from the trophy of the Copa del Rey. So I'm curious. Uh, clearly, the United States and Latin America have a lot of ties in lots of different ways. How did you end up being involved with India? Oh, it's, it's a, a really good question. The, the thing that my original project before pandemic was to settle up in, in LA and start uh, producing uh, audiovisual content for the industry from, from Latin America to the Spanish speaking market, you know? and after uh, the pandemic hit, we uh, start like uh, um, rethinking about our company and about our service. And we uh, realized and size the opportunity that in this kind of markets, the problem with the little companies or, or with the little teams that have really good internet numbers, but they don't know how to handle the YouTube business and that kind of, of, of uh, revenue uh, incomes that came from Twitch, they, they don't know how to settle like in the legal aspects, in the marketing aspect. And uh, for that reason, we start like taking these teams that have some really good traction of our internet in their own, in their own uh, countries and uh, try to give the advice of uh, what we was doing in California of creating this first company and with this vision for their own uh, speaking markets, in this case, India 
uh, is a, a really, really big market and, and they have a, a really good enthusiasm for the esports industry in this moment. So I'm curious about your company name, Now Play No Games. I would almost think it should say Now Play Games. So how did how did that name come about? Come about because I uh, I have a partner that is uh, he is Spain and we was thinking about uh, a lot about the, the the name of the the company because we want to uh, do something cool and we are uh, a speaker a Spanish uh, Spanish speaker native and for that reason we went was trying to. Uh, understand like the, the the brands in the United States when we was living in, in California, and I, I think in now for like the current moment that for me is a, a really uh, important thing that I believe in in the, the present, you know, and uh, no play no games is because like I I know that grammatically maybe don't have so much sense, but. It's like uh, now is the time for the industry to to play hard, but not as a game, uh, as a business or as a really uh, powerful industry that is taking shape in this pandemic times. It almost means that we're let's be serious about this or something like that, right? That's right. So, you know, since you let's let's talk about Latin America. Are you doing anything in Latin America? I mean, not Latin America, Central America. No, in Central America, um, uh, we don't have a current projects in the, in this moment. Only we uh, was advising uh, a League of Legends team that was named KLG, and we was uh, doing like marketing advice with them, connected with the uh, Mexican investors. And we was uh, doing a, a really good work with them and over Mexico, but we uh, decide to don't do like a tournament or that kind of stuff because the, the pandemic situation in Mexico as in, in any place of the world was really, um, uh, was really bad at the moment that we could have a, like a project or like a tournament. And we decided to shut down and wait uh, but in this moment, we, we are advising this uh, team that competes in the LLA, that is KLG. Okay, so what are some unique problems or barriers, barriers or challenges that you see in the countries that you're dealing with? Uh, the first one, the most important, I think, is the, the low ratio of investment. Uh, for the esports because uh, the traditional capitals here don't understand so well the, the this new trend and for that reason it's, it's kind of tough for the for the teams to get uh, you know, fundraising or, or a sponsorship and and the other thing is like the the technology access that for example the people in Brazil uh, we can have like a really good audience there but not anyone have like uh, a PlayStation or uh, a mobile or something like that. And for that reason, it's like the, 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 the poverty of Brazil, for example, the, of the digital, uh, the, the, sorry, I, I forgot the word in English, but um, the, the people in some places that don't have like the culture of video games, but we have like a really big markets open to take the opportunity to them in in mobile, for example, and and the the people over there maybe don't have the access for uh, PlayStation, Xbox, but uh, they are trying to to play these uh, really simple games that are developing for like in the in the laboratories. Sure, and so right now the uh, Olympic Games are going on in Japan. And uh, what do you think about having esports as an Olympic sport in the future? Uh, for, for me, it's really simple because I was uh, thinking a lot about the, the this debate. And for me, it's uh, chess decide like the, the whole thing because when you are uh, playing video games, uh, you spend like more energy. Uh, the, the calorie consumption is different. And for that reason, for me, it's, it's really simple. Esports should be at the Olympic Games. 
Sure. Yeah, and I I think it's going to be there. I think it's just a matter of what form, what game, uh, you know, whether it's going to be Rocket League or you know how it's going to look. Um, so you've talked a lot about the pandemic and the challenges. So do you think that things are changing? I mean, you've you've had a unique opportunity because you were just in Greece, so you actually got to go from you know you've been in the U.S., you've been in Greece, you are now in Chile. Tell us about like what it what it looks like to you. Yeah, it's it's really weird because when when I looked the industry at the first time, I was uh, working in Germany in, in Hamburg uh, in other field uh, doing like political lobby, and when I was coming back to see my family in two thousand seventeen in uh, three days before my my flight. Uh, I met the people from the eSports Observer that they was trying to create this first company that informs about eSports and everything. And that was the first time that I, I realized about the opportunity in Germany. And after three or four months, I start traveling like every country for five or six months and uh, going to the, the exhibitions, uh, tournaments and everything. Uh, was really easy to connect with a uh, really high executive uh, from the industry in that moment because uh, everything was kind of starting as this final shape that they want to give to the esports, the publishers right now. They want to do like these really big shows and, and really big arenas and we are seeing how the investment are going over there. And esports going to, uh, I think, is going in, in some point to... Uh, the feed like the traditional sports about audience numbers. I think that's going to ha happen in, uh, I don't know, two or three years. Sure. Yeah. So um, what, so what's next for you? You know, like as the pandemic uh, hopefully um, is, you know, winds down and things start opening up, what are, uh, what are your thoughts about where you're headed? My my company uh, organization. Uh, we think the company always uh, from doing the content in LA because we we believe that the opportunity in LA is unique because the, the price of the content from LA is already crazy uh, because uh, California Los Angeles uh, already win this. Uh, the, this competition uh, the, of the quality of the content. And for that reason, I think the, 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 the next thing for us is come back to LA and start uh, trying to uh, settle uh, agreements and partnerships with the content productions over there and give the assistance to uh, take it for the uh, uh, speaking Spanish markets and resell rights. And we are trying to 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 take that uh, that thing over, like in Chile, because it's my my hometown, and, and it's it's really easy for me to get to the executives here and uh, to to try to put projects together. But uh, the thing for the company is uh, being in LA and start working again. I don't know in 2022. Uh, because I, I don't think that right now is a, the proper time to, to move back to LA again. Sure, sure. So if people or companies want to uh, talk to you about, uh, you know, your expertise in doing business in Latin America, uh, is that that's something you invite them to do? Uh, in this moment, to be honest, uh, it's kind of tricky because I'm in, uh, in three big projects. And for that reason, I want to uh, finish everyone at the time. And after that, maybe I can uh, take some some other projects. But right now, I'm trying to finish the India's tournament and the, the, the thing with the NFTs that we are trying to put together famous people from Spain, from uh, Brazil and trying to make these uh, NFT collections for esports uh, community uh, and with a partnership with Binance. 
So how can people find your companies? Um, uh, over right now, we have my, my email contact. We are going to launch the website in seven days more when we launch the Indian tournament that we will we'll start uh, um, in, in a week. And uh, that day we're going to launch the, the website for, for our, our business. But it, my mail is the better uh, way to contact me. Or LinkedIn, right? You're you're on. Yeah, LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. With under your name. So anyway, thank you, Ulysses. I really appreciate you uh, being on my show, and uh, it, it's definitely terrific to learn about what's going on in other places of the world while we can't travel so much. That's right. And for for me, your your show is really good about that because when I was. And in Chile, in Brazil, uh, in the pandemic that I had the opportunity to go over Brazil to, to work in, on esports. Uh, I, when I was watching your show, I can understand what is happening in the other places. And I, I want to thank you again for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. It was a pleasure. Uh, anyway, thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Make sure to tune in next week. My guest will be Benjamin Bueno de uh, Mesquita, the founder and CEO of Beacon GG, will be talking about trends in esports. See you then.